Dar nu. books it's tailor made booklet made especially for uh, orders special orders at the same time her husband sells guitar handmade guitar you from you England you see there's so many handmade guitar so she is the, the housekeeper of the shop Welcome to part two of Bien Unwe. In this episode, I'm basically gonna visit uh, two main locations in outskirts of Bien Unwe. The first one is Puerto Fort Bien Unwe. The second one is called December Garden Bien Unwe. And they are considered outskirts of Bien Unwe, actually away from it. Uh, we're going quite in between the next major city and Pien Unwe. Uh, so let's begin this journey together right now. Well, Bico Fall, also known as BE Waterfall, is a picturesque waterfall situated a short distance from the town of Pien Unwe in Myanmar, Burma. This enchanting spot has been a part of the country's tourism scene for many years, providing a peaceful retreat for both travelers and locals. Historically, the history of Puikau Fall is deeply connected to the colonial past of Pyongyang, once known as Manuel Pyongyang, was a British hill station favored for its cooler climate. The waterfall became a popular leisure destination for British colonial officers and their families seeking relief from the heat. Following Myanmar's independence, the site continued to draw visitors, becoming a cherished picnic spot for Burmese family and nature lover. The natural splendor of Wake Up Fall with its cascading water framed by lush greenery makes it a perfect spot for relaxation and photography. Over the years, local authorities have made efforts to preserve and enhance the area natural, natural beauty, ensuring a clean and safe environment for all visitors. Uh, I have a special treat. In this episode, uh, I'm going to interview uh, Oka. He's actually a gen expert and a trader of gems. So um, I will talk to him at the end of the visiting of BE4 and December Garden. So stay, there, stay with me to the end and that way we can uh, hear what he has to say in regards to gem trading.
is definitely a beautiful, beautiful paradise, guys. Perfect temperature, a lot of good fresh food, and you have a lot of uh, orchard outside of uh, the home. Got the great orchard, got the orange orchard, got the avocado orchard, and you also have the dragon fruit orchard. Just about all the fruit are around Pihu. Also famous is plum, mamandi, So this is what before looks like guys a lot of man-made construction but the river is still natural they just uh, construct it around it to make it they try to make it deep they beautify it but actually the natural scene was much better I guess for the purpose of safety that may be one of the good reasons that they did it so the temperature is just very very nice guys you got a slight wind and it's uh, Compared to what the rest of the Southeast Asia is experiencing, this is the perfect temperature. Everywhere else is like 102, 101. Even young homes like that. This is what people have to say about about B4, guys. Take a look. We love B4. Before you can crack your head on by slipping 
on these rocks. Now they set it up with the concrete so it's even. Even if you fall, you won't crack your head. So they have a glass, glass uh, bridge. You can see from the top down as you're walking. Let me turn it this way. Such a beautiful sight, guys. I don't hear them at home charging. It's beautiful, guys. You have to admit, this is beautiful. So back then, people would try to step on and slip. You see, they put a pavement here. You can slip into the water, crack your head against these, against these. And I'm sure it's very slippery when it's wet, that, that rock. A, like I said, he's a gem, gem trader. He's, he's got a very keen eye for good stones, more gold stones. That's all he's been doing all his life. And he also do handmade guitars. This guy is quite talented. He also know how to do bake, good bakery. Myanmar pastry, Indian pastry. Well-rounded. And on the side, he also does motorcycle trading. So you know, in Fiona, you cannot just have one skill. You got a multiple skill set to do, to sustain and to survive. I'm tired. We just climbed this tiny hill. Oh, guys, look at that live elephant. Yeah. Okay. 
ça ferme. Là, ça aurait dû en fait. So, I love my country. I love the simple people that they are. I wish one day we will see the, good, the better side of Myanmar. Pray for Myanmar, pray for Myanmar. I guess this is kind of like the, the resort uh, plan. I think we only went to less than half of it, guys. So don't forget to come to D4 when you're in Pyeong Wan. It's a nice place, guys. Beautiful place. So I'm sitting with the uh, motorcycle gatekeeper. We're talking about the old time Pyongyang. He said before 2000, life was much more livable. Yeah. Now we have all kinds of people from all over around this area coming into Pyongyang. Too many people. He said life was much simpler back then. His name is Boon Mamon Feng. We are finished with B4. We love B4. Now we are going uphill. A little hill, guys. But it's very different for me. For the spirit. Over 300 pounds. Highway 210. This is December Garden. Garden guys. And the, the first layer of the 
December resort. We're not going to go down all the way down there simply because It's a huge resort. It's not bad, they're not just... It's a good one. It's a good one. It's a good one. So here's the here's the gate the entrance. We're gonna charge us an entrance. So we just entered the December Garden. As you can see, the welcoming flowers.
December Garden. My art. My car had a flat, so he, my, my nephew had to go and get it fixed. It won't be that long. Meanwhile, I decided to go on my own. And I mean, the tickets are paid for. But he has to go and fix the tire. Meanwhile, Scene of the December garden. Here we are, December cafe. From here, you can see a lot of nice views. A lot of people come here to enjoy during the summertime because it's just the right temperature in uh, December. There's a summer garden is a So this is what the cafe looks like, guys. You can come here, sit quietly, enjoy a meal or a drink. Tooting and drafting. You can get two also, but most people do the right thing. You want to have like three, three to four people inside. So 20 to 25, you have 25 destinations to look at. See, this one is the last of it. We're just somewhere around here. And everywhere you go, they have a little pit stop for drinks and for food. And we are going through another, like a little channel, a flower. Flower garden, but a little different setup than the one in the Kanoji Botanical Garden or Bifa. 
This one is 100% man-made kind of small wood, wood area, woody area into a garden. And it's a very nice piece. Kind of a little, a little setup here. People comes with families or couples or just by yourself. Enjoy your mother's nature. In this particular instance, you can see this is a privately, by the way, privately owned um, um, garden. They do a lot of work here daily, constantly planting, trimming, beautiful. So they have to trim this every day. You see this spot? Is nice they don't let the weed come around the side from it so you can see the flower and it's actually plant So as you can see, I'm going down the steps to the water of, of December Garden. Very nice. So this is a, a fruit, we call it bimme, but I forgot the English name. My brother, my first cousin also does plantation here in Jiyunlun. They share like the ah, passion fruit out there. It's called passion fruit, guys. This is what I mean. Passion fruit, I forgot the name. So this is passion fruit, homegrown Jiyunlun, and it's uh, they made it juicy and they also took out the seed so you can drink it without having to go through this mouth wobbling to get rid of the seed <laughs> he's having danger like kind of like a yogurt so i was i was talking with my i call him like my nephew he's a little over 40. I told him, I said, he has all the gift among the four or five nephews that I, I come close to. And uh, they're also very close to my real nephews. But his, I think, God-given talent is in the gem business. He has a talent, gift. And also, he's able to achieve raw stones naturally come to him. He doesn't need a go search for it. It comes to him naturally. So I try to advise him. I mean, I myself uh, did one of the biggest gem show. I'm the first one to do for the, the Myanmar country to Hong Kong. I'm the first one. Took over 30 companies uh, under, the, under the direction of the four ministers. I was able to get approved and then take them all over there. One plane full packed with all the, uh, you can say, gem traders. This guy, he knows all of it. I've seen it in the last five years, six years. I've seen it, how he did it. Unfortunately, the country didn't help. All the strange things are going on. This doesn't help the steady business for young people to grow into. 
So I try to uh, help in that manner, in the manner that, that it makes sense for them. So Oka, what is your next step in life? What's your next step? ตาลงกองอืมกิ้วเนี่ยนี่ดาเนี่ยเราอะกูรอเสะอ๋อเอาเฉยๆเบ้ซ่องหมดเลยแต่แม่กูไปอันนี้เนี่ยสูสีเน
That's what he's saying. He's saying that you got to have that connection as well. Aside from that basic skill set of how to look at the stone and how to, uh, which which stone has a which kind of uh, uh, value it has. But in order to get the real money, you got to know, you got to have connection. People who are willing to pay that. What the stone really worth. ဒီကတော့မိုးကုတ်ကြောင်ခင်မိုးကုတ်ကြောင်မှာမိုးကုတ်ကရှားပါကြောင်းမြတ်တီအား Mm. So, like I said before, he said the Mogul uh, stones, very unique, specific set of stones. Yes. Yes. They have a very, very high value. They are a high value item. And for a high value item, not everybody can afford it. So, you have a very, very uh, market segment for this stone. You know, not everybody can afford it. You can say, uh, a perfect ruby, let's say three, four carats, can be worth millions, you know? And who can afford it around this region? Only a handful of them. Anyway, according to the international market, you have to have, like you say, right connection, which he said he doesn't have that connection. He know how to look at the stone, he know how to know, he knows where to get them at, but he's not able to connect to them, the actual buyer. That is the problem. Most people in Myanmar have that problem. So they end up taking it, let's say to Thailand or to the border area of Thailand, you know, and you know, everybody spent a lot of energy and time and when it really, it never really gets to that, to the actual user, the end user or end buyer. There's so many layers in between. So they don't get the true value of what what the uh, the stone is really worth. So this is his side of the uh, explanation of what other difficult sets of uh, uh, things in the trading business, gem trading business. Anyway, I think that's it for our interview, a small little interview session because he is a true gem trader. I've known him for the last five years, six years. Uh, and prior to that, uh, he's been doing the same thing. I bought a few, a few uh, precious as well as some precious gemstones from Mogul from him. I have a few collection of my own from him. And he sold quite a, a number of uh, stones to my nephew. In fact, quite a lot. I mean, there were some really good ones. I mean, I wish I got it. You know, I just wasn't here enough. So he got it before I did. All right, guys, that's it for the interview. And that's it for sharing time at the December uh, Resort, Garden Resort.